Hey, we are live from quarantine. It's about, it feels like it's been about day 500 right about now. However, to everyone who is coming back to the channel, welcome back. Thank you guys for all of the support you've shown. And to everyone who is new, welcome to the channel. Welcome to the family. So, as you guys can tell today, we are going to be talking about medical school resources and different things we use in the classroom, different supplemental things we use to study, and how they can impact your studying. So the biggest things I'm going to cover today are things like Pathoma, First Aid, Anki, Boys and Beyond, and Sketchy. Before we start, I'm going to tell you basically my idea or my thought process behind making this video. So when I first started medical school, it seemed like I was already behind from the get-go. Like I walked into the classroom, the side conversations that were going around were basically people talking about different things they were going to be using, what they were really looking forward to trying. There's different resources that everyone seemed to know all about. So during the summer, apparently, everyone did all this research on things like, like the research that I just mentioned, like Anki, Boys and Beyond, Firecracker, all these different things, and how they were going to integrate into their study. Meanwhile, I had no clue what any of these things were. So from day one, I already felt kind of anxious, I already felt kind of clueless, and I did feel behind. So I talked to my mentor, and when I talked to him, I did think he was going to tell me, okay, yeah, use this because this is what I use and this would help you better. However, he told me to first go throughout my first semester um, without using anything, and then while going throughout the semester, start looking for resources that fill in the blanks or the gaps that I was missing. So he told me, okay, study this, find your study style, and once you find your study style, you'll start to realize different supplemental things you wish you had, and then you kind of fill in the blanks with those. The one thing he did tell me though was, get used to Anki, and to start Anki from day one because that would be the biggest key to um, actually succeeding. So the first things we're going to talk about are lectures and supplemental reading. Now, I spent my whole entire first semester learning exclusively from lectures. So whether that meant going to class, or whether that meant streaming them online, I just devoured PowerPoint after PowerPoint after PowerPoint. The first thing I want to say regarding this is you can learn from lectures you will do just as fine learning straight from lectures as you will using any of the next resources I'm going to talk about which are more USMLE kind of like NBME based and are there to prepare you for the bigger exams down the road. So the first stigma I do want to take away is that you will not learn from lectures. The only thing about lectures is with lectures you get all of the material and the material can have a biased aspect to it based on the person who is presenting the lecture. They will for sure give you all of the information only problem is with lecture, you will not be able to decipher the high yield material from the low yield material because they present it as if everything is important. So you will be learning way more than you have to learn in order to one, pass your exam, and two, in order to actually be prepared for um, future major exams on the road. So if you are going to lecture, be prepared to basically stress over the nitty gritty details just as much as like the big overarching concepts because you do not know exactly what will be tested, what is important. Unless you do have NBME style exams, then you can kind of pick high yield information. However, in the first semester, I went strictly through lecture, and if you are someone who can learn that way and you do not mind stressing over like the little details, then lecture in combination with something like Sketchy or Anki would be perfect for you if you do not think you need anything else. All right, so the next resource we're gonna be talking about is Sketchy. And now Sketchy is the resource that I will most highly recommend to anyone out there, especially if you are a visual learner. Even if you're not a visual learner, I will still recommend Sketchy to you. So Sketchy is something I integrated starting with the microbiome, like the micro immuno, and then I really became best friends with um, this semester with our cardio module. So with Sketchy, they take all the information you need to know. So whether it is like a microbe, a pathogen, or a drug of some kind, they take all the information that you need to know about that particular pathogen or drug, and then they create a story behind it. And then with the story, they create an illustration that they kind of draw on screen while relating certain topics to different key visual points in your head. And then with that, by the end of it, they have presented the whole entire information in the form of a story while also giving you like a illustration key point to refer to. Now, 
Sketchy is also very useful because it also helps with long-term memory because I do relate things now to different pictures. Like you mentioned something to me and I can picture, I can either picture the sketchy itself or picture like certain keywords based on different visual cues that then kind of help me recall the information in and of itself. So Sketchy is a resource that I would say I would recommend the most um, when coming into medical school. Now Anki, which I think I've mentioned in other videos, is a flashcard app that helps you learn based on the learning algorithm or the learning curve. So what it does is you have the information. Well, now this is irregardless of whether you're using a pre-made deck, a deck which someone else made which works for your current curriculum, or a self-made deck, a deck that you made yourself. So it takes the material that you have and it will present it to you. You go through it, you, whether it's a fill in the blank or a front back card, and then you can select whether it was a hard card, an easy card, or a difficult card, and then it will show it to you in a certain interval of time. The first time around, it would be something like three minutes, 15 minutes, etc., etc. As you get the card right, so then let's say you got it right twice that day when you went from the 15 minutes and it shows it to you the next day. If you get it right the next day, it will show it to you again in like three days. If you get it right in three days, it will show it to you again in like uh, five or seven days based on how easy or hard the card or the information on the card was to recall. So it works really well as far as like space repetition, as far as like reviewing the material goes, as far as like learning new material. Anki really comes in clutch for most people because they'll go through the material, they'll make their cards, and then they'll just continue to do their cards. And by doing their cards, they're reviewing and going through the material over and over again based on the space repetition or based on the learning algorithm in order for them to stay up to date with the material while also continuing to remember things. Okay, so the next resource we're gonna be talking about is Boards and Beyond. So what Boys and Beyond is, it's as close as you can get to an online version of medical school. So Boys and Beyond, they take every single top, uh, they take every single like module or block that you're gonna cover, and they basically have like different like high yield lectures that cover all the must need to know facts and information within those different modules. So for example, going back to the cardio module because that's when I discovered it, and that's when I've used it the most. You go, so let's say we're covering like a certain topic. You go to Go Boards and Beyond, you'll click like cardiology um, or cardiovascular system, and then with that, you have like all these different lists of topics that they do cover, and then within each topic, there'll be like three or four videos explaining that specific topic. And lectures that would take me maybe like about three four hours to go over or maybe they were lecturing for like two three hours on a topic boards and beyond would break it down into like 30 minutes and there would be very like high yield information um it covered everything and it was very easy to understand and it was very very well put together so with boards and beyond it's a great thing to use to review it's a great thing to use to like preview and it's a great thing to use to actually learn the information itself all right so the next resource i'm going to talk about is pathoma now, Pathoma, very similar to Boards and Beyond, is an online medical school type of resource that you can use. The reason I also use Pathoma, even though you have Boards and Beyond, is because Pathoma is strictly devoted to pathology. So all your different modules, all your different blocks, as you're going through the pathology of like the system you're learning or the disease you're learning or what, however you're going through it, you can find all of those in Pathoma and they do break it down into like the different organ systems that are pretty familiar or most common throughout all the different medical schools. So it is strictly pathology and the other reason why I really like Pathoma is because it does come with a book. Now if you haven't gotten this yet, I am someone who does prefer like hard copies of things. I hate reading things online and I hate PDFs. So the fact that this came with a book and I can mark it up, I can go through it, I can write on stuff it does help me a lot some of this information is covered in boards and beyond however pathoma goes, goes more in depth into all the different pathologies and they do have pathologies that boards and beyond may not have so this is why this resource is especially useful when you do get to your organ modules and you're learning different things so let's talk about rx now rx is just another resource like all the other ones it comes with different forms of it. So you can buy RX360, which are the videos, the flashcards, and the question bank. However, personally, I only have the RX question bank. Now with the question bank, it is as it sounds, it's a question bank. So if you need to test yourself on the material, RX provides NBME style questions for whatever module, block, or material that you're covering. Or and you can even break it down into topics or subtopics within a certain topic. So with RX, as I get closer to the exam and I've gone through all the information, I'll go through RX and I'll just do all the questions for that topic in order to prepare myself for the exam. So now you're able to apply everything you study into a question form. So if you're someone who does like learning through questions or you do want to test yourself, RX would be a great resource. RX questions are not easy. 
they are actually like very challenging, very difficult. However, you learn a lot through our questions. So even after you think you know all the information and you're answering questions, by like going through the questions, getting them wrong or getting them right, RX also provides extremely detailed explanations after each question on why the correct answer was correct, why all the other answers were wrong, and then overall general like explanations or summaries that you can also use to enhance your learning. So I really liked RX and it's something that I do plan on continuing to use because it does allow me to see what information I do know and what information I actually don't know as well as I thought I did. And the resource that's pretty fundamental to all medical students, we have first aid. Now with first aid, it's a resource that is pretty much offered to you within your first week of medical school. This book was $40 on Amazon. There are PDF copies of first aid all over the internet. Um, they're, and they do update first year aid every year, however, like I said earlier, I do prefer hard copies of books. So this one, you can get it pretty cheap on Amazon. But first aid is the summary of everything we've talked about before, whether it's like your lectures, um, boards and beyond, uh, pathoma, it's, it takes all of that information, oh, and sketchy, it takes all of that information and summarizes it into word form in a very like really well organized, but also very easy to read format. Now, how I personally use these materials and how I go throughout them, because there are a lot, the way I'll do it when I go to study, I'll watch the lectures because I do use the lectures themselves as a preview to know, one, the material I should be looking at, the material I need to know, and if there's anything specific the professor kind of like emphasizes or talks a lot about, but to also introduce me to the material itself. Then after I do that, I'll watch the relevant Pathoma, Boards and Beyond, and sketchy videos for it. So with Sketchy, anything drugs related or anything pathogen related, I'll go to Sketchy. Then I'll look at all the high yield points of that lecture or that series of lectures through Boards and Beyond. And any of the pathology, I'll go through Pathoma, then I'll like go through the book. The week of the exam, after I've done all the material and I don't plan on going back to it or watching more videos, I will do RX and first aid. So I'll go through the RX question bank, do different questions, and then kind of like fill in the gap I'm not too familiar or too comfortable with. And then first aid, I use as like summaries for everything. So. Everything we covered here is all personally my opinion as far as the different resources and how I use them. There are a lot more resources out there. Of course, feel free to go venture on your own, find different resources, find different things that work for you and your study style How because we all don't study the same and nobody learns the same way. However, those are the resources and those are the tools that I personally prefer, have used, and have experimented with, and I do like. So thank you all for watching this video. I really appreciate all of the support. If you can, please like, subscribe, and comment, and I'll see you guys on the next video.